Welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to be joined from all the way across the pond, as the Americans like to say, by Celine Moran, who is in the UK. How are you doing, Celine? I'm doing really great. Thanks. Thanks, John. Yeah. Hi to everyone. Yeah, hello. And uh, Celine is a, is a speaker, author, and well-being whisperer. And what we're going to talk about today is how to become your own CEO. And you're thinking, hang on a second, do I want to become a chief executive officer? Well, guess what? It's not chief executive officer. It's chief energy officer. The power to unlock your potential and uh, your emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. So, um, Celine, let's get straight into it. Where did you come up or what was the genesis of the concept of the chief energy officer? So when I qualified as a dietitian, I was in clinical practice and quite frustrated because people generally go to a doctor or a dietitian once something is wrong. And then I started in 2006 doing some workplace well-being initiatives. So realizing actually people in the workplace that have long-term stress, that's when our lifestyle habits go out the proverbial window, right? So that's where I started to focus my attention, where it was more proactive rather than preventative and only reactive once somebody got ill. And so I started using this language to take, you know, well-being and science, which isn't always sexy or appealing, mm -hmm. And chief energy officer, well, those were the people I was working with, were CEOs, MDs, managers, corporate athletes, so to speak. And we all need lots of energy because when we have energy, we can do anything. We can move mountains. But when we don't have energy, when our health goes wrong, that's when we potentially need to really pay attention and the cost can be high. Yeah, and uh, and I think it's interesting because you know that uh, you know we've been through phases of of like well being initiatives, but they always tend to just focus on fitness, health, or diet, whatever. But very rarely do they include any of the mind, the mind body connection, or the mind well being. And I think that's a that's a huge gap that still needs to be addressed. What do you think? I absolutely agree. And I think, you know, the pandemic and what we've experienced in recent years has almost brought that to the fore. In the past, I wouldn't use words like meaning or spirituality or your energetic body. But now we understand that like mental health is not just about your brain. We're not disconnected from the neck up. We're a whole person. So how we are is how we show up at work or in our personal lives. And we can't just distinguish between those we need to be able to do both holistically and absolutely we do need to be looking more at what maybe in the past we would have said was I don't know woo woo <laughs> a bit out there esoteric but now we have so much science to validate that the stuff actually matters and we can measure it the way, the way you feel for instance determines your productivity mm. so we can measure that through brainwave activity through the electromagnetic field around the heart it's really exciting really is it's good news for us it's good news yeah no i think it's great news because like i said i mean one of the, the issues i've always had is you know especially with the medical field is you know you have something physical wrong with you you go to the doctor you have something you have um, mental issues you go to psychiatrists and very rarely do the two like do the two even communicate let alone put together a holistic plan plan for you so i think this is that, you know where we need to go to is the the holistic approach. So tell me a little bit about how you would how you work with people and how you get them on this path. Well, I, I meet people where they're at. So if I'm working with an audience who really are only at the beginning of the behavior change curve, so to so to speak, you know they're not really excited about their well being. They don't really know what to do. Then I meet them there. So I've got frameworks like the Wellculator, which I've used for a long time that helps people in a very fun, engaging way assess where they're at based on 10 lifestyle habits. And then often people realize, oh my goodness, my score's really low. Like I thought I'd be a seven out of 10, but I'm only a three. And that alone, that awareness can help them pay attention. And then I have some audiences and groups that I work with that are really far down the spectrum of well-being. And with them, we can go into deeper topics around immunity, detoxification, gut health, uh, epigenetics. So that's an exciting field is, is how we look at our environment to support our genetic potential. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Yeah. Uh, so for those, for those people who are, are, you know, who get surprised by their low score, for instance, like what are, what are some of the things that, that, uh, 
really do surprise them when you, you know, dig a little deeper into it? That's a great question. I think what surprises us is a lot of us, we know what's good for us. Mm -hmm. However, common knowledge is not common practice. So when we sit objectively and we're guided by somebody like myself and we look at, am I really eating like an artist? So am I getting enough variety of plant-based foods? Am I hydrating? Do I get all the different types of rest, not just sleep? Do I know how to manage my stress response? Am I self-aware? Do I have mental fitness techniques? Do I really get up and stretch every half an hour? Or do I just think that I do? So I think when you get when you get handheld through a process in a way that's non-judgmental, very important. I, you know, if all this well-being stuff was easy, we mm -hmm. would all be doing it. Even I, you know, earlier today, I, I've had a sense of overwhelm. I actually wrote a post about it on LinkedIn and Facebook because I was feeling overwhelmed. And so I had to go and do something. I moved my body, I went for a walk, I spoke to a friend. So no one has all the answers, you know? And I think one of the keys is how do we make it practical for everybody's day-to-day -day life? You know, if you're a single person living on your own, if you're a parent, um, we all have different needs and we know what we should do, but it's about finding ways to create habits that become rituals, that create ease and fun and joy. And, you know, life is meant to be enjoyed. That's why we want to be well. Mm -hmm. Well-being is about being well. It shouldn't be. In my view, my approach is that it's easy and fun and there's a sense of joie de vivre. You know, I'm I'm South African. I was born in South Africa, but my whole family is French. Right. And they live in the Champagne region. So I love anything to do with Champagne and effervescence and uplifting. And that's what well-being should be about. It should be fun. Something that we look forward to. Yeah. And, and you know, what's interesting today, I think, is that how, how we've all allowed ourselves become so distracted and, and so you know, um, taking, getting dopamine hits off TikTok and Instagram, and all of that, and, and not really spending any time, you know, focused on ourselves, which, and I don't mean like in an indulgent sense, but really what you're talking about is like focusing on being intentional and how we approach life. But the, the pervasive culture is kind of forcing us in a different direction. So we are kind of swimming upstream somewhat. Yes. Yes, we are. And the sooner we acknowledge that, I think the easier it becomes to potentially find solutions if you want to, right? I'm not here to tell people what to mm -hmm. do. You know, I'm here to, I sometimes see myself as a lighthouse, you know, um, you know, I shine the light, but just because you see the light from the lighthouse doesn't mean you have to navigate somewhere differently or do something differently. It's a gift and a privilege to be able to do this work. And, and yet it's true. We live in a society that makes it difficult to lose weight, to manage energy, to manage health conditions. And that's a whole perhaps different conversation, which means it's up to us to be informed, you know, and to be more self-aware. And we know that we need stillness. We need nature. We need to move away from devices and stimuli and all this constant input. Because exactly one of the things it does, just one, is the dopamine release, which makes it addictive. Mm -hmm. It also reduces your ability to regulate stress. We know that there's been an increase in mental health issues as we've increased our usage of social media. So I guess it's, you know, it's not easy, but it is possible. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're willing and curious, you can find solutions. Once you have a strong enough reason why, you will find a how. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And you touched on something there, the self-awareness. And this is something that uh, I think is is so critically important and, and not that easy to achieve. Uh, most of us would probably... Uh, most of us would probably like to have achieved a level of self-awareness much earlier in our lives um, than we than maybe perhaps we did. But tell me a bit, a little bit about how how people can go on a journey of of self-awareness because it is something that you have to actually commit to, and and you also have to be prepared to uh, inter you know consume and take on board the information that comes back to you. Yeah, and that can be um, difficult and disturbing, you know. Um, I've done a lot of work with coaches and therapists over the years, and so you know, some of the some of you who may be listening may be aware of, with terms like your shadow, knowing your blind spots. I think one of the best places to start is one of the um, personality profiling systems that you feel drawn to. You know, so there's many out there. I personally have worked a lot with the Enneagram. And I find that's a great place to become aware of who you are at your essence and especially when you're stressed. Mm -hmm. So you can notice those certain behaviors because not all of us act the same. 
some of us, I tend to be more uh, self-preserving. So I withdraw and I pull inward, whereas some people tend to maybe numb with certain foods or go out and do overwork and overexercise. So start with some kind of personality profiling. And there's a lot that's even available free of charge. And then I think it's really worthwhile to work with coaches over time and get insight, you know. Um, if you need help with your finances, you'll probably go to a finance or tax expert. If you need help with business strategy, you'll go to a business strategist. If you need help with a, a clinical or a health issue, you'll go to the right kind of specialist. It's the same with your mind, you know, um, and there's a lot of coaches out there that are doing good work. I don't think we should do this alone. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and I would even add to what you just said there about, um, let's face it. We probably invest more in our hobbies, I mean, than we do even in our professional development, but certainly in our well-being. And to be honest, sometimes you need to take a step back and say, you know, why am I, why am I not investing in myself, investing my well-being? And as I said, you have no problem going and finding a, a golf instructor or whatever. So having a coach is, is, I think it's such a worthwhile thing, but I really wish more people understood how available they are and how they operate. So maybe one thing you could say is, um, tell me what a coaching, when you coach people, what, what is that process like? Because I still think some people are, are unfamiliar or, or maybe have misconceptions. Yeah. Um... I'm going to answer that question in a moment because yeah. another another route as well is, you know, especially if you find it maybe uh, too costly or too overwhelming to find a coach is to find an author and read their books and listen to mm -hmm. their podcasts. You know, so my favorites are like David White, Brene Brown, Dr. Gabor Mata, Richard Raw. You know, that's a, a very good place to start is listen to podcasts and read books. And then in terms of coaching, um, you know, my approach is, I really have a passion for group work. So I like working with leadership teams and then their greater teams. And from there, I sometimes do one-on-one -on -one work. And I specifically have a program where uh, I work with a, a fellow colleague who's actually based in the US in Colorado. And we do epigenetic personalized medicine. So, you know, it's a six month journey. We do proper blood tests. We look at your genetics and then we fine tune your diet around your brain chemistry. We tell you what supplements you likely need, what exercise. So it's a very fine tuned approach. So that's that's what I do. But there's many different coaches and people out there, depending on what aspects of your well-being you feel you need help with. Mm -hmm. Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Um, and maybe on a most basic practical level is... Before you start your day and engage with everybody else, could you get into the habit, if you aren't doing this already, to check in with yourself first? So in those moments when you open your eyes, before you reach over and access WhatsApps and SMSs and look at LinkedIn and your emails, spend a few moments asking yourself how you are. And sometimes you won't have the answer or the answer, like you just said, uh, John, may be uncomfortable start with that moment of stillness. We have deep wells of wisdom within us and our bodies are so intelligent. We just don't stop to listen. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. I, I often say this about your morning routine. Yeah, to be really careful, right? Because we do, we don't even like, you know, maybe if you're, your spouse or partners, besides, we don't even say good morning to them. We reach for the phone first, and like, uh, and 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 I would say, you know, you're either accessing news sites, which are there to provoke a reaction, not really to, there to inform you anymore. Or social media, you get into comparison culture. There's a lot of negative inputs that you can start your day with if you're not careful. So I really like what you just said there. And also you mentioned the, you know, the stress component. There is a certain, I think, element of we're addicted to stress or we see stress as a badge of honor or, you know, especially in 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 business, like, you know, stress people are busy people, they're important people. And we have to, that's, I think, something that we have to really overcome. Yeah, there's a level of maybe stress that you need in order to motivate you or something. But the way we have presented stress as almost a necessity in order to get things done, uh, just for me, just doesn't feel right. I absolutely agree. And stress is highly addictive. You know, when we're going into I'm going to use biological language here, but you know, that constant alert and acceleration of the sympathetic nervous system, um, the adrenaline and the cortisol makes us feel bulletproof in the moment. And when we stop, that's why a lot of my executives that I work with, when they stop and they go on holiday, they burn out mm. or they get migraines for the first three days or they just can't get out of bed. Um, and burnout, we know, is on the rise. You know, we don't, we're having an energy crisis. Like we just don't know how to manage our energy. Um, 
And it takes courage, you know, it takes courage to slow down. It takes courage to say, I've done enough in a world that just constantly has something for us to do. There will always be emails to answer, proposals to, to do, clients and customers to speak to, training, things to read, social media posts, always. You will never be done. You have to decide when you prioritize yourself and say, I'm enough and I'm worthy of rest. So more and more, we need to be very careful about what we let in and um, where we decide when to stop and to give ourselves permission to rest before we get to burnout. You know, it makes me think of the Chinese proverb that says, um, a healthy person has a thousand wishes, a sick person has just one. So Mm. don't wait until you're sick and you have one wish, and that is just to be well again. Do a little bit of care around your well-being and your body will help you to stay energized and well and happy as you go on this crazy adventurous ride called life. Yeah, and uh, uh, exactly. And I like what you just said there about prioritization, because I mean, that that is at the end of the day is, you know, we can find a thousand excuses why we can't do something because we're so busy. And and as I like to say, you know, because people say all the time, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been. And I always say, are you really or are you just more distracted than you've ever been? Um, which I think mm-hmm. is the case. But as you said, it's more it, it really comes down to prioritization. And at the end of the day, uh, if you take a step back for a moment and you you see all of these things that are going on and this overwhelm and all of that, I mean, surely that's a point when you should start to go, okay, come on, I, I really need to prioritize things a little bit differently. And you're right, have that have that discussion, even if, with your manager, which whatever is to say, like, I need some I need some recharge time, or I, I've, that those are conversations you need to have before you're having the conversation about I can't come in because I just had a breakdown. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I speak a lot about strategic rest, you know, with all our devices, when we see that the battery is running low, we charge them. And if you ever don't, you have that sense of panic, right? When you think, oh my goodness, my device is going to run flat. But our bodies are like that, like we're energy systems and we can run flat too. So we need to find ways of recharging with ideally before we have a complete crash and burn, because then the amount of energy you need to then top that up is enormous and there's a huge significant cost you know mentally physically emotionally spiritually so you know simple i say simple things you know if all these things were simple we would do them but you know the way you breathe so right now as we're speaking you know i've been quite conscious to keep my feet grounded on the floor and to slow my breathing because i tend to speak really fast i get really excited about this and that technique you know you, while you're at your desk, you don't even need to stop the meeting, stop the work, but how you work, especially around your body, because the body responds to stress before the conscious mind does. And a lot of us carry a lot of tension. You know, we clench our jaws, we hunch our shoulders, we increase our breathing. So by slowing down your breathing, letting your shoulders drop, relaxing your jaw, that's one way to strategically recharge as you're going about your day without needing a holiday in a hammock and a pina colada in your right hand. Yeah, but let's face it, that sounds pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, ex- exactly what 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 you just said there, though. But um, these things are simple, and but simple doesn't equate to easy. Uh, you know, because you have to you have to commit to them. But what you just outlined, though, there are, are some very simple simple things that people could start to do to to uh, to make a difference. And I think the whole thing is to making that conscious decision that you are going to be aware or intentional. You are going to actually like prioritize or slow down or do whatever needs but it it has to be a conscious it has to be a conscious decision right yeah 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 because you can't consciously change what you aren't conscious of in the first place right so yeah a lot of us go through life i guess numb or you know we just choose not to see things or not to accept that we could feel differently so the status quo is the status quo this is how i've always felt i've always snored i've always had insomnia I've always struggled with weight loss, but I'd like to challenge that because we don't know what we don't know until we try something different. And we're living through such extraordinary times. We need extraordinary skills in our skill set to manage every aspect of our well-being and performance. Yeah, and 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 I like to just say because I love when people like say like says so you have that um, person who's always late and they go oh well you know what I'm like I'm always late and you're like well no actually that's not a get out of jail free card that's something that you need to work on because my times is is just as important as your time but exactly what you're saying about is starting to become don't use that well that's just me or that's just what I'm like. Be- 
And that's always, that's just a great get out of jail card. I love that example. It's a good one because I also get a bit of type in people oh, yeah. <laughs> just say that they're always late. So yeah, I think stay self-aware, but with curiosity. And you know, when kids are curious, they do it in a playful way. So, because no one's right or wrong. There's no particular mm -hmm. right or wrong way to do this. And also there's no destination. So it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. No one gets to the end of well-being. You know, until you take your very last breath, well-being is something that's important. Mm -hmm. So you know, approach it in a way that you'd like to actually stick with it and dance with it until you take your last breath. That's why I don't agree with diets and these ex extreme approaches where people do it maybe for a month or two or three if they're highly motivated, but then they completely stop. Uh, I don't think that's always sustainable. Maybe for some personality types, but generally for my kind of client, consistency is better than intensity. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree totally. I mean, it's all about lifestyle changes as opposed to, you know, quick fixes. Oh, my God. Sorry about that. Um, uh, but no, I, I agree. I agree totally with you. I mean, it's about consistency uh, and it's about making making a commitment. And, and I think that's the thing is, you know, we... We have to make commitments to ourselves, and it, it, because if we can be the best person, because here's, here's the other thing I'll just say in in closing, I love when people sit around and talk about huge global macro issues, you know, and get all worked up over them and all of that kind of stuff that they have no impact on, right? Have zero impact, and their conversation has zero impact on. But if you can focus on being the best person you can be, being the best parent, partner, Nick. Mm -hmm community co-work or whatever you are actually making a massive difference to the world because you're it's spreading out through your community uh, and you're actually yes. influencing and modeling behavior and all these great things so i wish people would spend more time focused on that and less time focused on you know f on stuff that number one stresses them out and second of all they haven't can't have any impact on anyway yeah, and when we focus on the uncontrollables or the stuff out of our control, yeah. it takes the energy away from what we could be doing around what we could control, the micro environment. I love that. That's a yeah. great note to end on. Excellent. Well, listen, Celine, this has been fantastic. All of Celine's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the work you do. So I consider myself a well-being whisperer in the workplace. I'm very passionate about helping people that are leaders or high-performing teams to better manage their energy and enrich the quality of their life using frameworks like performance chemistry, the well-culator, fit to lead, but in a way that's fun and playful. So, yeah, I think and every single leader that enhances their well-being has a huge ability to influence so many others. Yeah, I love it. And the well-culator, I love that. That's a great, great name for it. So I would yeah. go, go check out. Um, Sorry, go on. But the welcome is available on my website for free. So you can access it, go through it, and I can take you through it through videos. I'd love everybody to have an opportunity to score themselves. Yeah, so I'd encourage you, as I said, all the information will be below this video. Go ahead, go take it, do yourself a favor. It might be life-changing for you. So hey, a couple, of, a couple of minutes might change your life. All right, so thanks again, uh, Celine. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.